Heidi Jokos is at the Bekim Langeni Hospital in Soweto, where history has been made. In keeping with South Africa's pioneering a tradition in heart surgery, the hospital performed its very first heart operation. 20-year-old Tumisang Motsikwa was stabbed while trying to assist a fellow pupil after a mugging incident. Our reporter Heidi Jokos is at the hospital uh, where Motsikwa's um, surgery um, uh, was done and she joins us from there live. A really uh, a heartwarming, pardon the use of the phrase, a heartwarming and positive story coming um, out of this hospital, Heidi. Um, what have you been told about how it went? Yes, I think uh, it's important to just get some clarity, of course, from the actual surgeon who performed this. But before we uh, speak to the doctor, I just want to highlight the fact that this really is a heartwarming story, uh, mind the pun, uh, given the fact that um, Tsumi Sang was basically trying to save another female's life. She was being mugged outside the school premises, and he was trying to protect her and save her, and he was stabbed in the heart. It's the very first time that a heart surgery of this nature is being perform was performed here at the Beckham Langeni Hospital in Soweto. But I think let's get further clarity as to how this all went. We are joined by the doctor, the surgeon who performed this, Dr. Ismail Ibrahim. Thank you so much for your time. Maybe just tell us about this very first heart surgery that happened at Beckham Langeni. Of course, it was probably very overwhelming given it's the first of its kind. Yes, so this type of operations are usually done uh, ordinarily at a tertiary institution or a regional hospital. Uh, because of the type of trauma and the urgency of the case. In this particular patient, he was too unstable to be transferred out. So we opted uh, to operate on him on the premises. Uh, it's the first that we've done at Beckham Langeni Hospital. And we're happy that it had a successful outcome. It's a team effort. So we were happy with our emergency room making a full diagnosis, identifying the problem. And then our theater staff uh, reacting to that and uh, we managed to complete the operation I think just over an hour and then he went to our intensive care unit and where they nursed him to completion and then he was transferred to our ward. Mm -hmm. So we were happy that this type of trauma uh, was managed at an institution where it needed to be done as an urgent matter and this particular patient may have lost his life if he had to be transported out. Speak to us about the trauma that he suffered because obviously a stab yes. wound is, is quite severe and quite serious and oftentimes people don't make it but he, he got a second chance at life especially because of the wonderful team here that was able to perform this under such immense pressure. Yes, so he suffered a stab heart, the injury entered around his left chest, it went through the pleural space into the right ventricle of the heart. Of course his blood pressure reacted to that and dropped because of this an enlarging clot that formed around his heart, compressing the heart and uh, impairing the, the pumping function or the pumping mechanism of the heart. And it's because of that uh, that these patients then become urgent. So his level of consciousness was dropping. It became really a life-threatening case. So that's why we brought him to theatre uh, as an urgent case. Mm. So we'll obviously be seeing him a little later, but mm. um, I hear that he's doing exceptionally well. He's actually recovered really well. I didn't expect to, to hear that he would be here today, but obviously that recovery period is also important and significant. It's very important in the recovery period. He went to our intensive care unit immediately after the operation. He was discharged two days later to the general ward and he's doing well in terms, that, in terms of being at home. So he's comfortable at home, but he will follow up with us at our uh, surgical outpatients department here. And doctor, there's obviously immense pressure on you now. I mean, you've done one. <laughs> Does this mean that this sets a precedent for more to come? Not really. At a district hospital, we tend not to want to do these here because they are better managed at a bigger institution or a tertiary hospital or uh, where there are more facilities uh, in terms of uh, monitoring post-op. In this particular case, we did what needed to be done. The patient was not stable for transfer, so we were ready to do that here. We will, however, have our guns loaded in terms of if this had to happen again, because we don't want anyone to die on our premises. We would like to manage these type of patients only that need urgent operations and are too unfit for transfer. The rest of them, we would, uh, our protocol is to transfer them to a higher institution. 
Okay, thank you so much for your time and well done. Pleasure. I think it's thank it's you. really a phenomenal and uh, fantastic to to see what was done. And this is the amazing team behind the scenes, uh, Marcel, that I think it's important to highlight here. Uh, they were obviously all parts of uh, this really life-saving surgery that happened. We'll obviously be speaking to Tumi a little later uh, together with his family. But once again, as I mentioned, a really um, great story to be told given the fact that he was saving somebody else's life and he tragically got st stabbed, but he got a second chance at life. Indeed, Heidi, and also uh, it taking place at Beke Langeni District Hospital, which you and I both know has been in the news for all the wrong reasons of the last year or so, but not taking away from the men and women, the healthcare workers that continue to do their work day in and day out, often under trying circumstances. Thank you so much. Heidi Jock is bringing us that story from the Beke Langeni District Hospital in Soweto.